We have already discussed how hydrogen can be prepared by different methods. Today, we will be discussing how hydrogen is prepared or which method is used to prepare hydrogen in the laboratory. We have already discussed that when an active metal reacts with a dilute acid, salt and hydrogen is produced. So this method is used for the lab preparation of hydrogen. But what is the metal used and what is the acid used? The metal used is zinc and the acid used is either dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid. If you look at the picture given on the screen, this is the apparatus that is set up for the lab preparation of hydrogen. We require a flat bottom flask, a thistle funnel, a delivery tube, a cork with or a stopper with two holes, a beehive shelf, a delivery tube, a trough containing water and a gas jar. We take a flat bottom flask and in it we place some zinc granules or pieces of zinc. We close the mouth of the flat bottom flask with a stopper with ha which has two holes. Through one hole we insert a thistle funnel and through the other we insert a delivery tube. The other end of the delivery tube is connected to a trough containing water. In the trough we take water we place a beehive shelf and over it we invert a gas jar. I'll be telling, telling you later why we invert the gas jar. Through the thistle funnel, we add some dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid. We observe bubbles of a gas at the bottom of the round flat bottomed flask. Now this is actually hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is very light so it moves upwards and passes to the delivery tube and it is collected in the gas jar. Now we have inverted the gas jar over the trough containing water. So this method of collection of any gas is known as downward displacement of water because the water is displaced downwards and the space is occupied by the gas that is being collected. So hydrogen is collected by the downward displacement of water. Now why do we collect hydrogen by the downward displacement of water and we do not keep the gas jar upwards instead of placing it downwards uh, facing uh, downwards on a trough containing water why don't we keep it upwards this is because hydrogen is lighter than air so what happens is as hydrogen is being collected it will move upwards so hydrogen cannot be collected by the upward displacement of air the next, met, uh, the next reason is hydrogen is highly inflammable. So when it comes in contact with air or oxygen, it starts burning. So we cannot collect it by the upward displacement of air. It has to be collected by the downward displacement of water. And since hydrogen is insoluble in water and lighter than water, it is very easy and convenient to collect it by this method. Then now I told you now hydrogen is being collected in the gas jar by the downward displacement. But we have to prove that the gas that is being collected is hydrogen. So what do we do is we take a burning splinter. Now what is a burning splinter? It's like a matchstick only. So we take a burning splinter and we take it near the mouth of the gas jar. Hydrogen is highly combustible and what happens is we see that the gas, the hydrogen gas, it starts burning with a blue flame and a pop sound is heard. Okay, This sound, the pop sound is an indication of the hydrogen gas. It's a test for hydrogen. So hydrogen gas being highly combustible, it starts burning with a pop sound. Okay. So this proves that the gas that is being collected in the gas jar is hydrogen. Okay. Now while perf performing this experiment, few precautions should be taken place. 
Number one, there should be no leakage of the gas. Hydrogen should not leak out from the gas jar anywhere from the delivery tube or from the cork. So the entire apparatus should be very airtight. That it should be airtight. There should be no leakage because hydrogen reacts, as I told you, it reacts with air and an explosion may take place. Okay. So now the precaution that should be taken is there should be no leakage. Then why do we prefer zinc? Why do we use zinc and not any other metal for the lab preparation of hydrogen? Number one is zinc is not expensive. Calcium, magnesium are very expensive. So zinc is uh, cheaper. So we prefer zinc. Number two is granulated we are using granulated zinc and granulated zinc it contains traces of copper as an impurity and this copper which is which is present as an impurity acts as a catalyst we already know catalyst is a substance which speeds up the reaction without itself undergoing any change so the reaction is very fast okay we cannot take sodium calcium and potassium because we already know when it reacts with an acid the reaction is highly violent and an explosion may take place okay and lead cannot be used because it does not react with dilute acid so these are the reasons why zinc is preferred and used in the laboratory preparation of hydrogen and not other metals so this is the overall reaction that takes place zinc reacts with dilute if you have taken dilute hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is produced and if dilute sulfuric acid is taken zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas is produced so this method is followed for the lab or laboratory preparation of hydrogen now let's discuss how hydrogen is manufactured. Now what is the difference between preparation and manufacture? Preparation is in small scale in the laboratory where you produce hydrogen in a small amount whereas manufacture means to produce hydrogen in a large amount or in a large scale. So the process used for the manufacture of hydrogen is the Bosch process. So let's discuss about the different steps involved in the Bosch process. First step is production of water gas. So what is water gas and how is it produced? Red hot coke is used. Here coke is not co the coke that we drink. Coke is a form of carbon. So red hot coke is taken and through it water in the form of steam is passed. So steam is passed over red hot coke and the temperature maintained is 1000 degree celsius and during this reaction carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas is produced this combination of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas is known as water gas and the reaction is highly endothermic because see the temperature maintained is 1000 degrees celsius so a huge amount of heat is absorbed during this reaction so steam is passed over red hot coke at a temperature of 1000 degrees celsius and what is produced carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas and this is known as water gas the next step is to remove hydrogen from the water gas so what is done is more steam is passed through this water gas now during this process a catalyst is used and what is the catalyst it is heated iron 3 oxide or heated ferric oxide so a catalyst is used during this reaction we already know catalyst is a substance that speeds up the reaction but itself does not undergo any change it only speeds up the rate of the reaction and the catalyst used here is heated iron 3 oxide or we can also say heated ferric oxide now a promoter is also used now what is a promoter a promoter is a substance which speeds up the 
catalyst action of the catalyst so catalyst speeds up the reaction and promoter speeds up the action of the catalyst it also does not undergo any involvement in the reaction it only makes the catalyst work fast so the promoter used during this reaction is chromium 3 oxide so more steam is passed through water gas to remove hydrogen and a catalyst is used that is iron 3 or heated iron 3 oxide and a promoter is used that is chromium 3 oxide the temperature maintained during this reaction is 450 to 500 degree celsius and this reaction is exothermic the previous one was endothermic this reaction is exothermic that means huge amount of heat is produced and what during this reaction what are the products carbon dioxide and hydrogen is produced liberating a huge amount of heat so the second process is to pass more steam through water gas to remove hydrogen now the next step is to remove carbon dioxide and if there is any unreacted carbon monoxide from the mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen because we are manufacturing hydrogen we don't need anything else besides hydrogen. So to remove carbon dioxide to the mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen that was produced in the previous step we add cold water water reacts with carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid and only hydrogen is left or we can also add caustic potash or also known as potassium hydroxide the carbon dioxide will react with potassium hydroxide to give potassium carbonate so only hydrogen is left behind now some amount of carbon monoxide from the water gas may be left in the reactant or the product so how to remove that carbon monoxide to the mixture of uh, carbon dioxide and water which may contain unreacted carbon monoxide we add a solution of copper chloride also known as ammoniacal copper chloride and then this dissolves all the carbon monoxide which may be present in the reaction in the uh, solution so only hydrogen is left behind so these are the different steps of the Bosch process the first step is production of water gas next one remo uh, removing of hydrogen from the water gas and finally removing carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide from the mixture so that only hydrogen is left behind so this is the method by which hydrogen is manufactured in a large scale so today we learned how hydrogen is prepared in the lab and how hydrogen is manufactured by the Bosch process I hope you all understood both the processes. Thank you, everyone.